good evening all uh, welcome to this rare but classic cases rbc set 3 we will be try to discussing about pediatric neurology cases so coming to the first case newborn presented with poor feeding vomiting seizures tonic limb movements and sweet swell of the urine you can see there is restricted diffusion and dwi noted in the brain stem in the cerebellum even in the brain stem extending along the cerebral peduncles and corticospinal tracts which are showing low adc values so whenever you see restricted diffusion and DWI noted in the cerebellum and even in the brain stem in a newborn with poor feeding, seizures and sweet smell of the urine, suspect uh, maple syrup urine disease. So what is this maple syrup urine disease? Maple syrup urine disease is caused by deficiency of branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase enzyme complex which leads to excessive accumulation of branch stage amino acids like leucine, isoleucine and valine in the serum and the urine. This is autosomal recessive disorder, uh, rare incidence of 1 in 1 lakh 85,000. Early stage radiological diagnosis is the key. Diffusion weighted is the most sensitive uh, sequence which depicts classical cerebellar and brainstem edema. In late cases, you have the restricted diffusion extending into brainstem, globus pallidae, thalamus, corticospinal tracts. And uh, the patients will have typical uh, sweet smell of the urine or maple syrup or burnt sugar urine smell. So remember maple syrup urine disease. Next case. Uh, term born 5 day male presented with drowsy state uh, uh, with recurrent seizures. The baby was normal up to 4th day, feeding was normal. But on the 5th day the baby developed seizures. We will try to see the video. So here you can see there is classical restricted diffusion and DWA noted in the whole of the white matter and also in the deep white matter in the basal ganglia region which are showing low ADC values. So whenever you see uh, restricted diffusion and DWI in the whole of the white matter in a newborn with uh, fits present with uh, this clinical history and presenting as uh, fits on the fifth day definitely suspects viral etiology and so the so this was a case of a rotavirus associated white matter injury or acute leukoencephalopathy the baby will be normal up to the four days but on the fifth day the baby will present with fits so the baby it is called as fifth day fits uh, so, the, uh, the other differentials which can be considered are perichovirus infections, enterovirus, adenovirus, HSU virus infections and other differentials you have to rule out are metabolic, toxic or hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. So, remember uh, diffuse white matter injury uh, in a newborn, one of the most common entities is rotavirus associated white matter injury. So, rotavirus associated white matter injury. Next case, 14 year female with history of headache, vomiting and scissors, uh, ataxia and extrapedemal symptoms. You can see there is diffuse white matter hyperintensities presenting as leukoencephalopathy. There are multiple edematous cysts. And also you can see there are multiple calcifications which are showing blooming on GRE. So there is a classical triad of leukoencephalopathy, edematous cysts and cerebral calcifications. So this is a classical case of Lebrun syndrome. So what is this Lebrun syndrome? Lebrun syndrome presents as a triad of leukoencephalopathy, cerebral calcifications and edematous cysts. There will be novel genetic mutation in SNOD-118 gene. And other common differential diagnosis you can consider is cerebral retinal microangiopathy calcifications and cysts that is Coates-Plus syndrome. So leukoencephalopathy with edematous cysts and cerebral calcification remember Lebrun syndrome. Next case child presented with hypotonia, delayed milestones, seizures and eye abnormalities. You can see there is dysmorphic cerebellum, small cerebellum and there are multiple cysts noted in the cerebellum with abnormal folial pattern. Also, you can see there is hydrocephalus and diffuse periventricular white matter hyperintensities with abnormal polymicrogyria. And even the brainstem is abnormal with fused superior and inferior colliculi. So, the baby has muscle symptoms that is hypotonia, eye symptoms and even delayed milestones that is motor symptoms. So, this is a classical case of muscle eye brain disease. So, what is this muscle eye brain disease which is nothing but congenital muscular dystrophy where you can have cerebral hemispheres, you have cortical migration anomalies with uh, diffuse white matter hyperintensities and hydrocephalus. Midline structures you have absent septum pellucidum, hypogenesis or dysgenesis of carpus callosum. And in the cerebellum you have abnormal cerebellar foreal pattern, multiple cerebellar microsis, cerebellar vermeer pontian hypoplasia and midbrain abnormalities as we have discussed. So this is a classical case of muscle eye brain disease or congenital muscular dystrophy. Next case, you can see two year male with history of macrocephaly, motor delay, spasticity, these are the extrapyramidal symptoms. You can see there is diffuse hyperintensity noted in the whole of the white matter. And you can see there are classical cysts noted in the anterior medial temporal lobes. So, and there is no restricted diffusion on DWA. And here also you can see there is diffuse white matter hyperintensities with cysts noted in the anterior medial temporal lobes. So whenever you see diffuse white matter hyperintensity with cysts in anterior medial temporal lobes or posterofrontal lobes, definitely suspect megalencephalic leukoencephalopathy with subcortical cysts or Van der Naab disease. 
So what is the most common differentials for Vandenap disease is nothing but Canavan's disease. In Canavan's disease also, you can have diffuse white matter hyperintensities and even the basal ganglia may be involved. But here the classical is uh, on MRS, you have the typical NA peak. So whenever you see complete lack of myelination, no subcortical cysts, elevated NA on MRS peaks, so definitely suspect Canavan disease. Whereas in uh, in uh, Vandenap disease, you have diffuse white matter hyperintensities and subcortical cysts in uh, anteromedial temporal lobe or posterofrontal lobe and there will be no elevated or NA peak in Vandenap disease. So these are the common differential you can remember. Next, uh, I wanted to show one slide where you can differentiate all the white matter disorders or common inborn acer metabolism in pediatric age group. Here you can see uh, there are diffuse symmetrical, bi symmetrical bifrontal white matter hyperintensities which may show enhancement. Uh, this is classical for Alexander disease. And other one is nothing but uh, diffuse white matter hyperintensities in the peritoxpital lobes, even involving the spleen of corpus callosum, which may show enhancement, which is classical in ALD. Bilateral basal ganglia hyperdensity, which is classical in case of Krabbe's disease. Uh, you can see eye of tiger appearance in globus pallidae in classical in case of pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration. You can have tigroid or stripe pattern seen in MLD or Pelizaeus Merzbacher disease. This tigroid pattern is nothing but spayed perivascular white matter in the background of demyelinating white matter and uh, you can also see dilated VR spaces in case of mucopolysaccharidosis even frontotemporal lobe atrophy with deep ceiling features mimicking batwing appearance this is classical in case of glutaricus duria even sometimes you have hyperintense caudate nuclei with atrophy and box shaped uh, frontal horns which is nothing but classical in case of Huntington's disease even hyperintense signal in the basal ganglia or caudate putamen with classical face of panda sign appearance in case of Wilson's disease. Even bilateral symmetrical hyperintensis in putamen periocardial gray matter in case of Leach's disease. So this one slide sums up all the white matter disorders in pediatric age group. Next case, six months old baby with history of microce microcephaly, delayed milestones and seizures. You have periventricular calcifications, even basal ganglia calcifications. You have ventriculomegaly with lysencephaly and hourglass type of appearance. So this is a classical case of CMV induced lysencephaly or pachygyria complex. Uh, and where you have the classical hourglass or figure of eight configuration. Here, here also you can see there is pachygyria, lysencephaly with band type of heterotopia and even periventricular calcification. So this is a classical case of uh, CMV induced lysencephaly pachygyria complex and you can remember hourglass or figure of 8 configuration. Next case, child with history of paraplegia, foot and gait abnormalities, bowel and bladder incontinence. You can see there is complete absence of the sacrum in the midline. Even you can see there is truncated abnormal conus medullaris which mimics, mimics the cigar shaped. So whenever you see lumbosacral vertebral degenesis, atresia below the L1, truncated blunt spinal cord mimicking cigar shaped conus medullaris with complete sacral agenesis definitely suspect caudal regression syndrome. So this is a case of caudal regression syndrome. Next case, 8 year child with seizures, vomiting and right sided weakness. You can see there is a large calcified mass which is showing central calcification surrounded by peripheral centripetal calcifications, central sorry central necrosis surrounded by centripetal calcifications and peripheral multiple tumoral cysts and adsent edema. So this is a classical periwinkle appearance or periwinkle sign where you have the central necrosis which removes the central part of the flower. So the central necrosis removes the central part of the flower. Centripetal calcifications resemble the petals of the flower. Peritumoral cysts mimics the leaves of the flower. So this is classical periwinkle sign in supratental ependymoma. And also you can remember 1, 2, 3, 4 rule for supratental ependymoma where 1 is single large tumor. 2 P's are nothing but perlegial edema periwinkle sign, 3 L's are nothing but large lobulated lobar mass, 4 C's are nothing but central chunky calcifications and large peripheral cysts. So remember 1, 2, 3, 4 rule for supratentral lependiomas. Thank you all.